Number one, write equations that show NH3 as both a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Okay, so welcome to the acid base chapter. Uh, this one's going to be pretty exciting. I really do like acids and, and bases and working with them. So hopefully you guys will too as we, you know, progress into the chapter. But anyway, let's just get to number one. All we just have to do here is we have to just write equations for ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. And they said that ammonia has to act as a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Now, the first thing is let's just tackle this word conjugate, right? Whenever they say that something is going to be acting as either a conjugate acid or a conjugate base, both of these are going to be existing in the products. So the word conjugate, when I look at the word conjugate, that just means that that has to be on the product side or yeah, we'll say on the product side. So it's on the product side. So there's going to be two equations here. One in which NH3 is going to be on the product side acting as the conjugate acid. And then one in which NH3 will be on the product side acting as the conjugate base. So let's just write it out. Now, this is the acid base section. So when we write acids and bases, generally, they will have equilibrium um, you know, symbols for them instead of the direct yield sign that we've been seeing. If your acid or base is classified as weak and it's not a strong acid or a strong base, it will be existing in equilibrium. So we do have to draw that double arrow. So let's just go for it. So let's say, okay, I have one equation. Here's my double arrow. And NH3 is going to be acting on the product side for both of them, right? So let's see. I have this. NH3 is going to be on the product side for both of them. Now let's just say that this one, right, this one, let's say that this is going to be the conjugate acid. And then the other one is going to be acting as the conjugate base. Conjugate base. Whoop. Conjugate base. Okay. Now, if you are a base on the product side, the beauty about acids and bases is that if you were a base on one side, you can't be a base on the other side. You're actually an acid. And the same thing with conjugate acids. If you are classified as an acid on the right side, you can't be an acid on the left side. You have to be a base. So they will crisscross. So if this is acting as the base on this side, this part is the acid. And then the same thing over here. If this one was acting as the conjugate acid, it's going to act as a base on the right side. So let's just write that out. I had to start with the base for this, because this is acting as the conjugate acid. I'll just say con acid. And then the same thing here. If this is acting as the conjugate base, con base, it had to have come from an acid. And that's where these come into play. Now, if you're starting off with the base, we're over here. Bases, I said, bases for B. Bases are always going to be adding an H plus to it to get one more H tackled on to whatever the base was. Now, in this case, this is the whole component, right? All we have to do is just tackle on an H. So in this case, I'm just going to follow this uh, little, uh, you know, little helper guy down here. Whatever my base is, right? And maybe I will just move this over a little bit. Whatever my base was, I'm going to add an H plus. So let's just write that over here. So something plus H plus. This combined has to equal NH3. So now all oh, let's just fill in the gaps. Let's see. Well, I have a nitrogen here. So I have to have a nitrogen on this side, right? And maybe I'll just write that in black. So I have to have a nitrogen on this side. And now I have a total of three hydrogens. If we're adding one, that's one out of the three, how many more 
H's are on the base. Yeah, there's two because two H's plus one H gets me H3. So your base is always going to be one less hydrogen than the acid. And then vice versa, the acid is always going to be one more hydrogen than the base. So that's an easy kind of trick way to think about it. Now all we have to do is just add the states. Since we're talking about acids and bases, the actual acid and the base are both going to be in aqueous. So NH3 aqueous and then NH2 aqueous. And now all we have to worry about is the charges, right? The total charges have to equal. Now NH3, there was no charge in the upper right-hand corner, so it's a zero charge. But H by itself will have a plus, right? And that means that it's a plus one charge. So plus one plus what number will get me a total of zero? Yeah, it would be a minus one. So we just have to make sure that those charges are the same. So this would be a plus, and then this would be a minus. And minus plus gets me a total of zero. Now we just have to do the same for the bottom. Now if this was the conjugate base, that means that whatever I started with had to be the acid. And now we're just going to follow the top example. And do you see how now the H plus is on the product side? So that's a thing. So now it's going to be this plus H plus AQ. Now let's see. The total here has to add up to whatever the H and the acid is, right? There's only one component on the acid side. So let's just gather up all the elements. Well, I see that I have one N, so that's nitrogen. And now how many total hydrogens are here? Well, I have three hydrogens plus another hydrogen, so that's H4. This is your acid, so it has to be an aqueous. And you might remember this as a polyatomic, right? And we should memorize our polyatomic ions because it will be super helpful. But we could always do the charge. This was a zero charge. Zero plus a plus one is a plus one. So this has to be an overall plus one. The charges have to match. So these are the two answers. Here is your equation as NH3 acting as the conjugate acid, and here is your equation if NH3 was acting as the base. But just know that bases always have one less hydrogen than the acid, or vice versa, your acid has one more hydrogen than your base. So that's a cool little trick way to realize it, all right guys? But hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the videos. These are two equations. Uh, there are actually a couple of other answers, but this one I think is the easiest for now. All right. So I will see you all in question number two. All right. Bye-bye.